Hey, well, good morning, City Light family. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, good to be with you guys. Uh, just this morning as we're celebrating Christmas kind of in your own homes with your family. Uh, I hope you guys are just enjoying your time and that you're staying warm. Obviously, it's been cold the last couple of days. But uh, question for you, Ricky, as we kind of think mm -hmm. about the Christmas season, Christmas devotional that we're you know bringing on for the church. Um, what's maybe a favorite Christmas memory that you would like to share with everybody? Um, yeah, so for me, the, my favorite Christmas memory kind of is tied to a gift. And so, um, you know, sometimes just because of our circumstances growing up and financial situations, sometimes we'd have less gifts or more gifts. But one year I remember, and this does kind of date me for how old I am, but I remember getting like a boom box, like a CD player with the detachable speakers and everything. I was <laughs> super pumped and I listened to Boys to Men mm. all the time. And I still remember those. And I thought at the time I could sing along with them really good, but then later I found out I was not a good singer, so. What did you like the song that's like, the moon and the stars and the sky, I'll be there. I like that one. That's, that's Boys to Men, right? No, that's not Boys to Men. Who's that? I forget their name, but that is the song called I Swear, which is by oh, Not Boys to not. Men. No. No, I, like, I thought I could sing Yesterday really good. <laughs> so, so, incorrect. But um, what about you, man? Do you have a favorite memory? <laughs> Do you want to share? No? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so, it, it's more so just like a load of memories. Uh, my, my family, my mom's side of the family, every Christmas Eve, we get together, so all my aunts, uncles, um, cousins, my mom is one of six, so we all have just had this tradition of all getting together on Christmas Eve. When I was really young and the family wasn't like super huge, um, we would stay awake until midnight and then we would open gifts together. Um, now it's kind of transitioned because, you know, the like my generation is having kids and then there's kids all over the place. And um, so usually we've always just packed into my mom's house and my mom's house isn't very big you know if you think of the conference room actually that we're sitting in here in the at the back of the church it's about the size of my mother's living room this is like two or three years ago um we're having dinner kind of eating i'm in the kitchen with some of my cousins and i kind of start to hear this commotion going on and i'm like well i wonder what's what's going on so i walk into the living room and i see you know the 20 people in the living room kind of moving towards the walls and I see like my mom and maybe an uncle or a cousin or someone else on the other side of the room and they brought out this pinata and they're like we're busting this pinata like a three foot stick hand a you know a six year old mm. to the stick to break the pinata in a room where there's no space luckily nobody got hurt have no idea um, why my family yeah. thought that was a good idea, but we love to celebrate. And so uh, that was just a cause for celebration as we got together as a family. Um, but just considering celebrations, you know, Christmas morning, Christmas day is a huge celebration in and of itself. Um, but we kind of want to ask the question, why specifically are we celebrating? Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to spend some time in some different passages of scripture to kind of just encourage us and remind us exactly why we do celebrate Christmas morning and Christmas day. And so I want to take us first to John chapter one. I'm just going to read the first five verses, John chapter one, verses one through five. It says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that had been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. So as we kind of think of these verses specifically and why we celebrate Christmas Day, these verses are pointing us to Jesus, you know, and John kind of begins, in the beginning was the word. Jesus has been from the beginning of time, and he was there as a part of creation. All things were be cre being created through him. Apart from him, nothing was created. Kind of showing that Jesus wasn't just like a, a baby who came in a manger, you know, on Christmas mm -hmm. Day, but he, he was the creator yeah. of the world. It's part of the foundation of all of that. Um, and so as we consider... Uh, celebrating today God himself came to us in the flesh and he's the creator of the universe but what else sticks out to you Ricky yeah I mean like later on John uh, 1 14 you know just says that the 
the word became flesh, you know, so, so the word of God, you know, like God himself, the son became flesh and dwelt among us. And we've seen his glory. Glory is the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And, um, and also verse nine, the true light, which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And so that, that for us, for Christmas, that, that, that's what we're thinking of that, that, that the, the supernatural becomes natural, that, mm. that, that God stepped in. Yeah. God came near, um, in Jesus, the son. Um, and I just love it how it just in verse five, it's like the light, the light shines in the darkness mm -hmm. and the darkness has not overcome it. And so for us to just think that, that Christmas is this celebration of Jesus arriving, um, and how the, the light of the world, Jesus Christ has, has, has stepped into the darkness that, that Jesus is willing to, to step into our mess, step into to this world where, where we know we feel it, right. That it's broken, that it's, that something, something's off and something is, is not okay. And, and that Jesus is like, no, I'm not going to just leave you in that. And that, that it, he's going to step in to it, into this world. And so that, that way you don't <clears throat> have just some, like Christmas is just also this reminder that we're not like talking about something like some God that's far away, mm -hmm. some God that's, that's distant, that's just kind of maybe made the world and just kind of watching it know that Jesus is, is very well aware that yeah. he's coming near. That's good. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, even in light of this, I like how, you know, because this in John tells us a little bit of why Jesus came. And I think another passage that helps us dive into a little bit more specifically is in the Old Testament of why Jesus uh, has come. And it's in Isaiah 53. Um, so Isaiah, if you're following along at home, Isaiah 53, um, verses 4 through 6. Um Hey, Alex got that way quicker than me. So Isaiah 53, four through six. And it just says this, uh, talking about Jesus. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we were healed. Um, and we uh, are all we like sheep have gone astray. And we, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So what sticks out to you there, Alex? Yeah, as I consider, you know, the suffering servant passage and just looking at this, the, the why did Jesus have to come? You know, I, I think verse 6 says it really well we all went astray like sheep we've all turned to our own way and the lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all and so just considering you know jesus had to come in the flesh uh to live a perfect life to be the obedient son that he is but yet he was pierced for our transgressions crushed because of our iniquities um and as we consider the reality of that this is a gift you know that god you know we talk about christmas being uh, a time where you're able to give gifts and you celebrate and you have all this stuff. And yet Jesus himself came to give us a gift, a gift of eternal life because of our sin, because we walked away, because we were astray. We turned towards ourselves rather than turning towards God. And so as we look at Isaiah, uh, I think it's really clear for us to just see the reason that mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. came was to give us himself, to give us freedom from sin, to give us life. Uh, and what he did, though, in order to do that was the death on the cross. You know, his life wasn't just simply to come to live until he was 80 and then pass away, um, but to mm -hmm. actually experience the punishment that was supposed to be ours. And he put that on himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that, you know, when we think of Christmas, we think of, right, the, the kind of the nativity scene and mm -hmm. uh, later on the wise men come or in, in Luke 2, the, the angels speaking to the shepherds, which all of that is, is yeah. great. Um, but to, to just think that man in, in a baby mm -hmm. that, you know, that the cross is coming. Yeah. Um, and, and that on him was laid the, the sin, the iniquities of us all. And, and I feel like for me, like in this passage and what we're reading, Christmas is, 
is this just reminder that that I'm re I really like you said I'm getting a gift I'm getting something I don't deserve yeah um, because it you know just says that we've we've all like sheep have gone astray each one to his own way and um, and we've repeatedly done that right like that our yeah. hearts are um, far from God no one does good we we've all fall short of the glory of God but that that in Christ coming in in being incarnated becoming um, putting on human flesh that that there's this persistence of God because I think if 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 it if it was me and people kept rebelling against me going astray doing their own thing and I keep pleading with them and they just keep doing it I think I'd just be like I'm done right like fine but I'll leave you alone mm -hmm. but God even's like no actually I'll come closer yeah and I'll take all of your sin all of just your your brokenness your your wickedness and I'll die for it yeah so that you can have life so it's <clears throat> just so cool to be reminded of that gift mm -hmm. yeah even the way verse four like really words it yet he himself mm. bore our sicknesses mm. he carried our pains like th those words are so so relational and so real and tied into mm. to what he's done and I think that helps us even see like so if this is why Jesus came, if we're celebrating mm -hmm. his coming, if Jesus had to come in order to carry our, our sicknesses, our burdens, our pains, because we were sheep that were walking away from him, how do we then respond? You know, yeah. how, how does mm -hmm. this, what does this actually mean for us? How does it change us and move us forward? Um, and so a verse, a couple of set of verses that maybe might help us see what the response is, is in Romans chapter eight. So if you wanna to flip to Romans eight with us, um, we're just going to read the first four verses there. Do, do, do. So uh, Romans 8, uh, 1 through 4 reads, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering, in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So, Ricky, how does this, how do these chunks of verses maybe show us how we respond what this means yeah. for us in light of jesus coming well i think um one i chapter eight <clears throat> verse one is like one of my favorite verses mm -hmm. in the scripture um because it talks about kind of like not, not even necessarily how we respond but what's true yeah right because yeah, jesus true. came because he's paid the price for for our sin he, he's he died in our place therefore now there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So, so, so yes, do I still sin? Yes. Do, but because of Christ, what he's done for me and my, and trusting in him, it's like, yeah, there's now every moment of my life that I'm no, no condemnation, like zero. Like I'm a hundred percent right with God, permanent right standing with God because of Christ. And, and, and like Christmas, again, just that reminder of like, and I have that in Christ because Christ came, mm -hmm. Christ arrived, no condemnation. Um, and so, so I, I like how this just talks about basically our current reality um, of that. We are no longer in the flesh, that, that we're, we're this new creation mm -hmm. and, and we are in Christ. We are in the spirit. And so I think for us to think through of, of what, what is our Kind of response is, is one to just recognize who we have been made mm -hmm. by Christ. Um, but of course, what he's done for us, but then how does that actually shift who we are mm -hmm. in Christ and so our identity? And then <clears throat> for us to just think through, and Paul goes on to pack it, unpack it the rest of this chapter, just think, wait a minute, I am no longer just a sinner. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm a new creation, I'm a saint in Christ. And so now because the spirit of God fills me, because who I fundamentally am is is different. I can live a life in the spirit to follow God. Yeah. You know, and so like, um, and, and to live for him. I don't, I do sin, but I don't have to sin. And so that it's, man, I'm free to live totally for Christ. 
um, and to follow him uh, because of what he's done for me and for what he continues to do in me, that he continues to give me strength and fill me with his spirit. So, but I don't know, that's what sticks out to me. What about you? Yeah, I think verse two is what really kind of stands out to me. It's just being set free mm -hmm. from the law of sin and death. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, our sin, like, really can wait like a sense of guilt which i think is the spirit can use mm -hmm. in such a way to help us move towards repentance but when guilt stays and lingers in ways it creates shame a sense mm -hmm. of shame that we can get trapped in and just the reminder with verse one right no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus because we're set free from mm -hmm. sin and death like because jesus came as an infant, because he lived a perfect life, because he died for me and rose on and sits on the throne of victory, I'm free from any sense of shame. I'm mm -hmm. free from any sense of, of death, separation from God, uh, a sense of loneliness, of, a feeling of maybe loss, a feeling of, uh, of sorrow. Like I have great joy in life because of what Jesus has done. And, and I can live in that freedom that Christ has done all what I could never do. Um, and that's just something that just helps me as I continue to just respond to Christ's coming is just living in that freedom uh, of the life and victory that I have because of Christ. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think as far as um, for us to think through of just uh, for all of us, my, myself, you at home, mm -hmm. uh, as you're watching this for um, what's kind of our mindset, if you will, in mm. this and and. Um, for us to recognize the gift that we've been given in Christ, who we are in Christ, and for us to even just think through, um, okay, what, what should this stir within us? Um, and so, yeah, I just want to take you guys um, kind of like to a final encouragement. Uh, go to Luke chapter 2. Um, so this is uh, still in the New Testament, third, third book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke chapter 2. Um, we'll pick it up in verse 10. Um, and so there's these shepherds out in the field and this angel speaking to them, verse 10. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, mm -hmm. for, for everyone. So, so I think, man, it, it should just stir within us, it, within us this sense of joy. Yeah. That that man, I don't I don't have to be afraid. To, what does God really think about me? Does God really love me? Who, what, what what's going to happen because of me? Jesus has come. I'm no longer condemned. Mm -hmm. um, and if He overcame sin and death, then I could trust Him with everything. Um, and so yeah, that we have this joy to know that Christ came for me, that He came for people in my home, uh, for my neighbors, my co coworkers, and so um, and that this is ultimately, I mean, good news. Um, I mean, it's great news that Christ has come. And so I, I just love that part. And then for, for verse 11, just a reminder of what, you know, uh, what's happened. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. Um, and that's what we're celebrating today um, on Christmas is, is that the Savior's been born. Yeah, Jesus, and um, for us, who is the Christ, the Lord. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, any last thoughts? Yeah, just to kind of close us with this final encouragement from Luke to you know, you brought it up how he mentions today in the city of David, a Savior was born to you, the Messiah, the Lord has come for you. This is what we celebrate today, church. Jesus mm -hmm. came as an yeah. infant. Jesus was born in the flesh. Light defeats darkness. Darkness cannot overcome it any anymore at all. He came because we were sheep who ran it astray. He took on our 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 sorrows, our sicknesses, mm -hmm. you know, our diseases. Every ounce of evil and wickedness that's within us, Jesus died and paid for it and rose and defeated it in great victory. And so we can live in the freedom of no longer being condemned uh, because of our sin. We can live in the freedom that we have everlasting life with Jesus. We live in the freedom of reality that we can walk with mm -hmm. God in the spirit and continue to move towards Jesus. And that's a great joy. The Messiah has come. He has come to save his people and to give them everlasting life in a relationship with him. And that's beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, well, 
Yeah, thank you for, for joining us this morning. And I um, hope you have just a great Christmas yeah. and that you are able to celebrate food and gifts and all those things, but but that we keep our hearts, that we keep our minds just focused mm -hmm. on um, really the ultimate gift that, that has been given to us. Yeah. And that's the gift uh, of Jesus Christ. So um, would you just pray with us? Um, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you. We praise you, God. Lord, that, that you stepped in, that you came near, um, or that you never turn a blind eye, or that, that you are not unaware of, of what is going on, Lord, but, but that you are faithful, Lord, and that you sent your one and only Son to die so that whoever believes in him would not perish, um, would not be distant from you, would no longer be condemned, Lord, but but be saved and have everlasting life, have eternal life in you. And so, Lord, we praise you for that. Lord, I, we pray for <clears throat> just the, the church. Lord, we pray for everyone. Lord, that you would um, just remind them of your goodness, help them to, to know of your closeness, of your love for them. And, um, and, and Lord, um, just pray, Lord, that you would shape us uh, and mold us to, to just be more and more like Christ, Lord, to, to be, to live in the freedom, Lord, that we now have in Christ because of uh, your death and your resurrection, and also that you just giving us and filling us with your spirit. And so, Lord, um, we just thank you also for this church, Lord. Love this church, love the people, and love what you're doing here. And so um, we praise you for that. And um, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, church. Have a Merry Christmas. See you later.